Article 38, upon petition of at least 25 legal voters of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, to see if the town will vote to modify all fence height restrictions in deeds for former town lease lots to allow fences to be a maximum of four feet high, matching the height of trash and recycling bins distributed by the town required for town collection. Majority vote required. Not recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 03. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 38? Anybody who wants to move this article for discussion? You want to move this for discussion? Ms. Bielabreski, do I have a second? Can I get a second? Seconded uh, by Mr. Jones. Taki, would you like to? Um, she has a question about the article. <coughs> I have a quick question. I don't care if she goes first. Yeah, just okay. this, is, this is what is driving me crazy with this warrant, ladies and gentlemen. When you say on petition of, I want to know who the petitioner is. There are names on that petition. Mr. Kravitz, for example, did the petition article the way you normally do it, on petition of Sonny Kravitz and. But I want to know who's sponsoring the confounded article. And you've got several private petition articles in here. And I think the public deserves at least a name or two names of the petitioners. I'm really not happy yeah. with these articles that don't specify the the petitioner. And I think the distinction, Ms. Woolsey, is that there's no requirement in the RSA for petition warrant articles for those names to appear. However, if you submit your petition warrant article with your name or the names of others at, in the body of the uh, petition warrant article, the board is then required to print it that way. So I think that's why you see some articles will have a name and some articles do not because Nothing in the RSA says you have to, and there may be some citizens who want to maintain some anonymity about what they have moved forward. It's like me, it's a petition, and they haven't, in years past, they have almost obviously moved. Okay, all right. Uh, um, Taki, do you wish to be heard? Yes, I do. All right. Okay. I put up this article, and I didn't want my name on it, because I didn't want anybody thinking how they would react to it based on who put it up. Um, if it were required, I would have, and I understand what Mary Louise is saying, and if it, so, you know, if we want to make a requirement, that's fine. At any rate, now we know. Uh, my name is Ann Bailabreski. I live at 247 Landing Road. In the course of my work as a land surveyor over the last 30 years, I have observed hundreds of four-foot-tall trash and recycling bins rearing their ugly heads above the three-foot-tall fences at North Beach. There is a deed restriction on most of the current and former lease lots that limits fence height to three feet. The town has distributed four-foot-tall trash and recycling bins to the entire population. I proposed this article because I believe it would improve the residential areas made up of former and current lease lots because people wouldn't have to look at everybody else's trash cans all the time. And I don't think it would contravene the original intent, which was that there weren't a bunch of box lots surrounded by privacy fences. You'd still be able to see over the top of the fences. Uh, I see from uh, the meeting minutes, the selectmen meeting minutes, that the selectmen have chosen not to recommend this article because someone told them it might create a title nightmare, and that's in quotes. I disagree. I can think of at least two ways that four-foot fences could be allowed without any title nightmare drama. A single deed could be executed naming all of the relevant lot owners as grantees, or if individual deeds are necessary, the selectmen could be empowered to authorize the execution of a single deed without the need for the RSA 4114A process if and when a lot owner applied for a building permit for a four-foot fence. I'm not sure the selectmen actually had a chance to think this through, and I don't see it as a nightmare at all. I see it as a benefit to the residential areas at the beach. It is the function of our town government to implement the will of the voters. The fact that something might be difficult or inconvenient to accomplish is not a reason to walk away from it. <coughs> if the citizens want this, I would encourage them to pass the article 
and let the administration manage the enactment as part of its executive responsibility. Docky, with your experience, I wonder whether if the article passed, whether the vote, the official vote, could simply be recorded at the registry. Well, uh, that's what I thought. And but then I was there would be that notice that was... to any title holder. That, I, that... I would agree. There yeah. was pushback about the, yeah. okay. the legal problems. But if you, as an attorney, think that might be worth well, I just, I... looking at, I think that's what could happen. I think when, when, um, when deed restrictions individually on lots are, are released by this body, the vote gets recorded. That and would then, be great. And then you, you move on from there. So. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Um, Mr. Jones. I, I want to be clear. I do not oppose these anonymous uh, citizen petitions. I think they're quite appropriate, but I think it would be useful since those who signed the petition, it's all public record, if we, if we make that more accessible, perhaps putting it on the website or having a printout out front here, then that would alleviate the concerns stated earlier. Uh, regarding the, the fence issue, I, I think this, uh, this, this is a generally a good idea because we're normally dealing with these individual lots having to change the deed requirements year after year after year. However, I think this blanket one is just too broad. I think there ought to be a means by which we can grant the authority to make the change, uh, transferring that authority from town meeting to the planning board, for example, um, who is our land use board, uh, and let them make the decisions on individual lots. I was wondering if the petitioner might consider that a friendly amendment and whether the moderator would entertain such an amendment if one were to make it. Well, I think, and I would welcome input, last year we passed an article that changed the process or gave another avenue for relief from these deed restrictions. Before, every time you wanted a deed restriction release, you had to come to the body, go on the ballot. And so last year, we empowered the Board of Selectmen, I believe, with a process that mm -hmm. included conservation. So there is a way, other than this, um, to get relief on a lot-by-lot -lot basis. So if you had a particular lot and you said, I'd really like to have a four-foot fence, uh, you could go through that process I without that. coming to us as a as a body and getting voted. Yeah, as I recall, we transferred that authority to the board of selectmen. Right, right. So that is available. Um, this is a different approach. And uh, I, I, I spoke to that last year, saying it was proper to be in the land use body, and it yes. was the planning board. And I think that it it seems clear that this warrant article intends to remove the authority entirely from the board of selectmen. Uh, is that is that your estimation, Mr. Moderator? It would be if this were to pass. Yeah. then there would be no reason to make resort to these, this process because it would, that restriction it would, no longer would, be, be, would empowered, be gone, right? yeah. would be gone from gone. all the yeah, deeds. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's overly broad. I, I do not support this amendment. Um, I think uh, it's just overly broad. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Wolsey? Yes. Really quickly, I, I support what Mrs. Balabreski is trying to do here. I would have been happy to see her name on the petition. All right. You've been unmasked. Come up. I just want to say one more thing. I don't know if everybody realizes that the um, giving the selectmen the power under the RSA 4114A thing to um, remove individual deed, restric deed restrictions requires a process which involves five administrative hearings and about two months. You have to go to the Conservation Commission, you have to go to the Planning Board, you have to have two selectmen's meetings two weeks apart and apparently now another one two weeks after that for one fence. Okay, and I'm saying it, maybe it's broad, but I think it should be broad. It should apply to everybody. So, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Provencher. Brian Provencio, um, I'm currently the vice chairman of the Hampton Zoning Board. Um, this, I th if, correct me if I'm wrong, because we don't speak to deed restrictions because we have no jurisdiction over them. Is it th a three-foot fence right now? Yes. And I believe when they probably 
set it at three feet, it was because they didn't want to obstruct people's view from putting a six foot or an eight foot fence up. And they probably came to the conclusion of a three foot fence, I'm assuming because back in the day, trash cans were 32, 34 inches tall. So maybe that covered them up. And to say, let's have the four foot fence, I think goes along with what they were probably thinking when they did that before to just obstruct the view to put their trash bins away without seeing them all standing out there. So I'm not opposed to this. Thank you. All right. Uh, seeing no further discussion on Article 38, it will appear on the ballot as printed. 